بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين My brothers and sisters in Islam as we finish Ramadan and the Eid is about to begin it is very important for a Muslim to understand what are the Sunnah practices on the day of Al-Eid and what are we supposed to avoid first and foremost what is Al-Eid and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he undertook Al-Hijrah from Mecca to al Madina, when he finally arrived to al Madina, he found the people of al Madina celebrating two days, the day of al Nairuz wal Mihrajan. So he asked the people of al Madina, what are you celebrating? They said, we are celebrating two days that we used to celebrate in the days of al Jahiliyyah. Before Islam arrived, we used to celebrate them. So the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna Allah abdalakum bihima khayran minhuma yawm al fitr wa yawm al adha. He said to them that Allah Azza wa Jal has replaced these two days with much better days. That is Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha. And we learn from this hadith that it is haram to celebrate any religious day except Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this hadith rejected and condemned every celebration except Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha. So my brothers and sisters in Islam, on this day of Al-Eid, there are certain etiquette and there are sunan that are supposed to be implemented. The first of them, At-Takbir. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Quran, وَلِتُكَبِّرُوا اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ Allah Azza wa Jal commanded us that we declare His greatness because of that which He guided us to. And how do we declare Allah Azza wa Jal's takbir? How do we declare His, his greatness? Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, in one of the narrations, he mentioned to say, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illa Allah, Wallahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillahi alhamd. We are declaring Allah's greatness because of His guidance for us. You see, in Ramadan, we worshipped Allah Azza wa Jal. We fasted the days, we prayed the nights, we read Quran, we made dhikr, we made dua. All of these good deeds, who guided us to them? Allah Azza wa Jal. So the way we thank Him is by making takbir. What takbir begins on the last day of Ramadan when the sun sets. And it continues all the way until the beginning of Salat al-Eid. And the sunnah is to recite the takbir, not to listen to it. There are some people that will play a clip on YouTube or tune into a radio station or a TV station and listen to the takbir. This is not right. This is not the sunnah. Yani, it's not like the Quran. When we listen to the Quran, that is a sunnah. You earn reward for it. But at takbir, the sunnah is for you to recite it, for you to say it, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, all the way until the end of it. Uh, now, so, so do this and practice it in the house, with the children, with the family, as you're going to Salat al-Eid, on the road, on the way. All of this time is a sunnah to recite this takbir. The second sunnah is for men to wear the best of clothing and to apply perfume. This is a sunnah. And this is something that was a cultural practice in the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never condemned it, nor did he reject it. So it was known that it is a sunnah to wear the best of clothing and to apply perfume. Also, <clears throat> the third sunnah is al-ghusl, to have a shower before leaving to Salat al-Eid. And this was narrated by Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu. He used to take a bath before he used to go to Salat Al-Eid. The uh, fourth sunnah is to eat something before going to Salat Al-Eid. And more specifically to eat a date and to eat them in an odd number. As Anas radiallahu anhu narrated that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would eat an odd number of dates. And this is so that you break your fast on the day of Eid because it is haram to fast the day of Eid. Subhanallah. And when you eat this date, reflect on this that just yesterday we were fasting and for 30 days in a row and today it is haram to fast we are eating why because yesterday Allah Azza wa Jal told us fast he commanded us and today Allah commands us to break our fast and this is how our life is whatever Allah Azza wa Jal tells us to do we rush to do it and whatever he forbid us from doing we avoid it and this is our life Allahu Akbar obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now, the uh, fifth uh, sunnah of Al-Eid is that the Eid prayer is prayed outdoors. So find a place 
that is praying or find uh, يعني, where the Muslims are praying outdoors and join them in the Salat outdoors. Unless there's a necessity to pray indoors, bad weather or it's raining, then يعني, it is fine and permissible to pray indoors. But the best, the best, Sunnah al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is to pray outdoors. This is what he would do sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Even though he lived in al Madinah, the Prophet's Masjid, when the Eid day would come, he would walk out in the open and he would put a stick into the earth and that's where he would pray behind this stick as a sutra for him. Now, and this, there is wisdom in ulama rahimahumullah say, so that the unity of the Muslims could be on display and that everyone sees each other on the day of Eid. They listen to one Imam, they pray behind one Imam. Well, subhanallah, this is what uh, Al-Islam is. It's about the unity and the Muslims being together. The sixth uh, matter here that we have is that it is also a sunnah for women to attend Salat Al-Eid and Khutbat Al-Eid. It is a sunnah for the young woman, uh, for the virgin, for the uh, married woman, for the menstruating woman, all forms of women are to attend. When Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, concerning the uh, menstruating woman, he said, الصَّلَاةُ وَيَشْهَدْنَا الْخَيْرِ That they just sit and they avoid praying because it is haram to pray. يَشْهَدْنَا الْخَيْرِ And they witness the good. They see the good that is happening. They listen to the khutbah and so on. Uh, the seventh uh, matter here that we have is the sunnah is to walk to Salat Al-Eid and to walk back home. Sunnah is to walk. Now, if that's, if that's يعني, able, if you're able to do this in your case, as for people that live far away from where Salat Al-Eid is going to be established, then there is no problem in driving there. But the sunnah is to walk to Al-Eid and to walk back home. And this is what Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu narrated that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to do. And another sunnah, and this is the eighth sunnah, is that you go to Salat Al-Eid with one way and you come back home another way. Subhanallah. And uh, the wisdom behind this, as the ulama rahimahumullah mentioned, that so that you can have two paths that witness for you on the day of judgment. Allahu Akbar. One path would say, he walked through me to come to Salat al-Eid. And another path would say, he came through me to go back home. And all of this is worship. And all of this is a witness for you on the day of judgment. And all this walking was in obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The ninth matter is to congratulate one another on the day of Al-Eid. To congratulate one another by saying Taqabbal Allahu minna wa minkum. And this is something that is not recommended, nor is there any a, a hadith or a sunnah that rejects it. Il Imam Ahmad rahimahullah, he said, uh, it is permissible for people to, rec- to, to congratulate one another by saying Taqabbal Allahu minna wa minkum. Or any other words, well, Imam, Rahim, uh, Imam Ahmad rahimahullah, he said, I do not start congratulating people because there is no sunnah for this. There is nothing specifically mentioned by Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he would do this. However, if a person was to congratulate me on the day of Eid, then I would respond to him. And so congratulate each other on the day of Al-Eid by saying, Taqabbal Allahu minna wa minkum or Eid Mubarak or any other words that um, carry this meaning of congratulating. My brothers and sisters in Islam, and this is to be done, يعني, congratulating each other after Salat Al-Eid. That's the best time for it. And then attend Salat Al-Eid, pray Salat Al-Eid, listen to Al-Khutbah. And finally, there are things to avoid on the day of Eid. Number one, do not spend the night of Al-Eid in Haram. So many people spend the night of Al-Eid in Haram. One night before, they were all in worship. They were all praying to Allah. They were all crying and begging for Allah's mercy and forgiveness and being freed from the fire. And the night of Eid, people spend it in cigarettes, wa shisha, and whatever it is. All of this is impermissible, severely impermissible. Subhanallah, as the shaitan is released, you will see his effect on the ummah. So be careful and be from those who are avoiding all these haram matters that happen on the night of Eid and the day of Eid. Also, it is not recommended, nor it is a sunnah to visit the graves on the day of Eid. So avoid this. Avoid visiting, specifically visiting the graves on the day of Eid is impermissible because the day of Eid is a day of celebration and rejoice and joy and happiness, not a day of sadness. The other thing is avoid on the day of Eid mixing between the genders. Avoid this and shaking hands with non-maharim, women. 
this is all impermissible and not allowed on the day of Eid. Also, avoid the over-decorating. SubhanAllah, people today have made the celebration of Eid like that people celebrating Christmas and Easter and other, other matters to the point where some Muslims, may Allah Azza wa guide us and them, have made a Eid tree just like the Christmas tree. And this is no doubt haram and it is rejected in Islam. We tell these people with all kindness and compassion and wisdom, please avoid these matters and close them and turn and, and, and remove them from your business for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. This is not permissible to introduce these matters in Al Islam. If there was a Eid tree, the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would have been the first one to teach us this kind of Sunnah. But this thing doesn't exist. And this over decoration is also not a Sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So avoid it. Light decorations, maybe perhaps a banner that says Eid Mubarak and you put it in the house, two, three balloons, maybe something like this, something very light. Then this is Al Ulama, rahimahumullah, some made exception for this, no problem. But over decorating, this is not the Sunnah of the Messenger. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, my brothers and sisters in Islam, enjoy the day of Eid, spend it in obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and spend on your family. This is also something that is recommended and something that is liked. Uh, and, and allow your children to enjoy the day of Al Eid, allow them to enjoy this day and enjoy it with them as well. Uh, and the Eid goes on for one day as opposed to Eid al-Adha that goes on for yani, the three days so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from us all we ask him subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us uh, success in this life and in the next innahu wa liyudhalika wal qadiru alayh wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in